Hi all. This is the first of several videos that will cover an interrogation report of Hermann Göring by the United States Strategic Bomber Survey Team in June of 1945. The topics of this interrogation revolve around German production, the effects of Allied bombing, reasons for the Luftwaffe's defeat, the ME262, and more. In the interest of keeping these videos relatively short and weekly, the first video will cover section 1 of the report, which is about one-third of its length. Video 2 will cover section 2, which is another one-third of the report's length. And video 3 will cover sections 3 through 6, which is the last third of the report. Organization and planning for German aircraft production. Effects of Allied air raids on aircraft production. Question. Was the production of aircraft under the control of the Luftwaffe until the spring of 1944? Answer. Yes, until May or June 1944. Question. Up until that time, were you satisfied with the quality and quantity of the aircraft produced? Answer. No. The quantity was far short of what it was aimed to be and increased only after Speer took over. Question. Why did the quantity remain below par prior to the time Speer took over? Answer. Because the Luftwaffe was dependent on them for allocation of raw material and stood alone in this respect. After the Minister of War Production, Speer, took over, he included the Air Force armament in the whole picture, where, up until then, we stood alone. I have been asked very often in the last few months about these production questions, and I had to answer them without being able to think it over properly. All these things are so deep-rooted that you would have to go back some 10 to 15 years. The more I have been asked about them, the clearer they have become. I am drawing your attention to this so that you don't have to blame me for having said something else six weeks ago. I'm sure you will understand this, I want to make it very clear. Question. Were you satisfied with the aircraft production after Speer had taken control? Answer. The production was marked by the fact the biggest priority was given to the manufacture of fighters, and the bombers fell back so that, towards the end, they were hardly worth mentioning. Question. It has been said that as much as 55% of German war production went towards the production of the Luftwaffe. Is that correct? Answer. That is probably figured a little too high, but undoubtedly the Air Force had swallowed up a large part of it, because our Air Force included the flak and the signals, which are permanent installations. Then there are ground organizations, machine tools for aircraft, and so on. Question. Do you think that even more than 55% should have been put into that part of your total war effort, as distinguished, for example, from your land effort? Answer. I would not say that, but I do believe very definitively that in the years 1940 to 1943, we should have invested even more in the Air Force. Question. What were the effects of our bombing attacks on aircraft assembly plans? Did they cause any substantial loss in production? Answer. The effects were not so detrimental because the main attacks concentrated on the assembly plants, which were separated from the manufacture of individual parts. In that manner you have, for example, destroyed at one time Marienburg, but in spite of that, in a comparatively short time, the assembly was on in some other place, while the production of different parts themselves was not hit, so that the whole thing could keep running. Therefore, you can see that the attacks on the industry producing these parts were very disagreeable, but the American Air Force attacked assembly plants at first. Question. Did we destroy many Finnish aircraft in those attacks on the assembly plants? Answer. That depends on the circumstances. If a certain accumulation occurred in these plants, then naturally a lot were destroyed. When the weather was favorable and we were able to fly away all the machines, then the losses were comparatively small. Question. Did the dispersal of the assembly plants cause any substantial loss in production or decrease in quality? Answer. Basically, I can say that the widespread dispersal caused considerable delays due to the bad transportation, but generally speaking, it functioned alright, although the quality suffered considerably. It happened, for instance, that the fittings at the assembly were not accurate enough, and similar things. Sometimes it was just that the fittings of the wing section was rough. In other cases, the two landing wheels were different. It was therefore decided to concentrate production again, and an order was issued that everything would be concentrated in one subterranean plant with the exception of the prime components. Question. In 1944, a lot of German pilots complained about the quality of their planes. Were those complaints valid, and were they the result of dispersal? Answer. Absolutely. In the first place, the transportation situation was bad, and the components did not get through at all. It would have finally ruined us if we had not started changing over to concentration. It was the one and only reason. 
Question. Do you think that the increase of quantity of aircraft had anything to do with the decrease in quality? Answer. It had as well. I can talk here quite freely. Production was transferred to the Speer Ministry. The man responsible for the production there was Zauer. Zauer was a man completely sold on figures. All he wanted was a pat on the shoulder when he managed to increase the number of aircraft from 2,000 to 2,500. Then the Luftwaffe was blamed that we had received so and so many aircraft, and where were they? We said they would have to see those aircraft, of which a large part were immediately destroyed. Secondly, spare parts were never made because spare parts would have cut down the number of aircraft produced, and so there was a continuous fight between the Luftwaffe and the Speer Ministry, in which Speer himself would stand up for us, but Zauer lived only for his numbers, numbers and numbers. The 262, for instance, was one of the most delicate machines, where we always had to keep changing the engines, or at least overhaul it, and we just could simply not even get a fraction of the engines and the reserve because they were needed for the manufacture of new airplanes. A group would have 80 machines, the 262, of which only 20 would be operational. There would be some 40 aircraft idle, which were intact except for they required an engine change. And when we demanded extra engines, we got told that we could not have them because new airplanes had to be built. Then we would get 40 new aircraft. This would then in turn increase the inventory to 120 aircraft, but the ones already used were still grounded because they were without engines. Consequently, the number of operational aircraft was not increased at all. Question. Did you believe that Speer did a good job? Answer, yes. Speer was positively a genius. Question, why did you not have Zauer removed from office? Answer, he was not in my command at all. He was Speer's man, but practically he was responsible to the Fuhrer and had a lot of influence with him. I never had the slightest influence in these matters. The Fuhrer had appointed him personally. But even though Zauer had caused us great difficulties in this field, it's without a doubt that in other fields he brought a tremendous increase in production. He had the whole armaments program on his hands, and if you weigh his bad qualities against the good ones, you still might say that all in all he was a good man.